made a steal. I hope I didn't dent it then. It's going to start again. <laughs> It's a work of art, it's a one-off, it's a unique guitar. It feels alive in your hands, it's got a zing to it. That's, yeah, make love, not war. But I thought, oh, it's a, it's a French guitar, isn't it? So we'll have it in French. Well, I hope that's what he says, that's what he told me it says. <laughs> That'd be funny, wouldn't it? I just stop talking now and take it apart. There's no going back now. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. It's good to see you as always. Today, I thought we'd take a, a, a closer look at a, a guitar that you might have seen hanging on the back wall for a while. It is this. It is, to give it its proper name, a Steel G Kid. <laughs> steel, because it's made of steel. It's made of steel. As opposed to being a steel guitar, i.e. a slide guitar. It's made of steel, it, of course, is one of the artistic creations of the French luthier, Artist Loic Lepap. I think I pronounced that right, uh, Loic. Apologies if not. Loic Lepap. Pape. I'm not sure. My French isn't very good. As we discovered when I was <laughs> trying to converse with him on the on the telephone about this. We did most of it via email, but I did I did have the pleasure of talking to, to Loic. He made this for me in 2018. Okay. I I came across one of his creations in uh, in I was one of my trips to Denmark Street I was in Macquarie's actually in Charing Cross Road um, which is now sadly closed but Macquarie's a long-standing store and uh, they have some fabulous guitars I had some fabulous guitars and they had one of his steel um, Les Pauls and um, he does all sorts of stuff you know I'll put a link to Loic's website in the description box they're all unique. I mean, they're all unique. I mean, obviously, he, he made other steel Gs, <laughs> steel kids, which is a junior, get it? But they're all unique. Um, anyway, I was, I'm waffling already, aren't I? So I saw this, and I thought, well, that looks really cool. So I contacted him, and I commissioned this. I said, can you make me a, can you make me a junior? And he said, of course, <laughs> um, for a price, of course. And not as much as you might imagine, I will quickly add. Uh, for what this is, a fantastic guitar, and it's a work of art, and I bought it because I knew it was going to be a work of art and didn't expect it to necessarily play and sound as good as it does. More of that later, uh, and you'll hear for yourself. But in fact, it is a guitar that I used on stage with my band, and here's a picture to prove that. Um, it sounded fucking brilliant, quite frankly. You'll see in a bit, we'll get to that in a bit. What we'll do now is I'm going to just go through it, really, because I've, I've always wondered <laughs> what, how that's fixed on, really, because it, it sounds hollow, but obviously there must be a wooden block or something under there, surely. So what we will do is we'll, we'll pop the strings off and we'll, we'll, we'll pop the pickup out and have a little nose underneath and, and see what he does. And same with the control plate. I think these are all metal as well. I think the scratch plate even's metal. Um, so yeah, we'll let's have a look. I'm I'm really interested to uh, to 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 find out what's what's under the hood of this one. Obviously, having the steel on it, it's a little bit heavier than your your standard uh, SG Junior. So um, not crazy heavy, but let's let's just weigh it and find out exactly what it is. Yeah, there you go. A little bit heavier. No neck dive with this one. I don't think you'll find. Let's weigh it. Yeah, just over eight pound, three ounces. 3.738 kilos. Yeah, there you go. Okay, all about the guitar then, some more specs. Uh, well, it's a steel body, 
and it's got a mahogany neck. It's got a mahogany neck with a rosewood fingerboard and uh, the neck is uh, beautiful actually. It's, um, it's made by Lufia Tom Marceau. Yeah, Tom Marceau makes, made this neck. Uh, I think he makes all of the necks for, for like Lapap guitars. And it's this, well, they call a, a rounded C, 59 rounded C. And it's just <laughs> really nice, chunky, proper chunky neck. Uh, well, let's have a look at the measurements. Okay, here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements at the 12th fret. There you go. Uh, I'm not sure what the nut's made out of, but obviously it's done properly. A Grover, proper Grover, Rotomatic tuners. Uh, you know, which, which obviously I, I chose. And I chose the neck profile as well, obviously, because you can. Uh, it's got a go-to uh, wraparound bridge. We'll have that off in a minute and we'll, uh, we'll weigh that. I suspect that's quite a lightweight aluminium one. The P90, dog ear P90, is made by Kent Armstrong. Kent Armstrong P90. And I think that Kent Armstrong is, is a relative of Dan Armstrong, the guitar maker. I think that's right. I'm going to Google that in a minute, and if, it's, if I'm wrong, I'll have to come back and correct that. Anyway, yeah, that's it. Medium jumbo frets, I imagine. Um, it's, well, I'll just stop talking now and take it apart. Go. There's the wrap over. It's not especially light actually. It says go to Japan on the back. Yeah, it's not especially light. 79. There you go. First off, let's take the scratch plate off. Oh. So this is interesting. So straight away, you won't be able to see. Like I've got a plaster on my thumb. Sorry about that. O obviously, they're bolts. They're not screws. So there are threads. It's threaded the, the body. And now all I've got to do is make sure I don't cross-thread anything putting it back in. It's going to happen, isn't it? I shouldn't really do this, but look, you know what? I don't suppose anybody's ever done this before. If he's cross-threaded anything going in, it's going to expose itself, isn't it? Dangerous. Oh well. In for a penny. There's no going back now. It's aluminium that. There you go. It's lightweight aluminium. Just the effort that's gone into finishing that though is huge, isn't it? <laughs> well that's off now. Okay. Pick up. Pick up. Here's the cover. There you go. Ah, foam. Ah. Oh, that's interesting.
There's quite a lot of foam in there. You can feel it all the way. So we're not going to be able to see in there, I don't think. I'm not... Yeah, this is, this is not just a little bit. So I'm not going to be... I'm not going to be pulling that foam out, unfortunately. I'm not that stupid. But I can feel... A wooden block, it's not all the way. Look, my thumbs, <laughs> you see that on that camera, yeah. It's kind of there. But there's a block there and there. So I kind of, there's like a, here's a block on each of those that that screws into. Mm. Well, I could. No, it goes into. I'm not going to pull that out. I'm not going to pull that out. I'm not stupid. There you go. You can see that. It just says Kent Armstrong. W P U L J. Okay, so that's. Yeah, that's as far as we're going there. like a brass uh, base plate, doesn't it? Let's measure the output of that. Sorry, I keep saying measure the output. It's not measuring the output, is it? It's, it's taking the readings. That will sink in one day. Eight point oh six kilo ohms. A 5.74 Henry's. So again, a high inductance reading. That's what it is. Right. <laughs> so this is the first screw going back in. Bolt, sorry. I do hope these, I don't mess this up. You go don't over tight them <laughs> over tight over tighten <laughs> right let's do this <laughs> Delighted to say his original craftsmanship was spot on and that wasn't at all problematic. That's good news. Right, let's just have a look in here. There's not much to see in there. Uh, soldered over the pots. I can't really see what's on there. What's that? An orange drop cap, 0.22. There you go. You can have a nosy at that. That's all I can see. As you can see, bolt on neck. I'm not going to be taking that off though. Um, let's have a look under the truss rod cover though. There you go. It's got a, a little Allen wrench style truss rod adjustment. So it's got a truss rod, <laughs> as was fully expected. Okay. Look, I'm going to put a new set of strings on it now, put it back together, and um, we'll plug it in and we'll see what it sounds like. See you in a minute. Right, here we are, plugged in. But first, this is what it sounds like unplugged. Uh, 
That's got quite a ring to it, hasn't it? Obviously, that's only this lapel mic picking that up, but... There you go. Now, plugged in, today, I'm using the Harley Benton Tube 15 again. It's, um, it's, it's so easy to... Well, it was, it was rigged up from last week, and uh, I thought, well, see what it sounds like first. Straight away, boom. It's, uh, it's what I'm looking for, so yeah, we're using that again. Okay, so this is what it sounds like. No pedals on at the moment. I've rolled the, I've got the amp dime, you know, right into danger zone, as always. Um, so I'm rolling off the guitar a little bit to start, just so we don't scare the children. And it's like, oh, nice and clean. Oh, nice and clean, jangle. Dial it up a little bit. Nice. Um, if you like that sort of thing, anyway. What I what I like to do with this is it's those um, Stooges kind of uh, drony open. can sort of start off quite nicely. Get the idea, don't you? That's just with a Harley Benton Tube 15 <laughs> dimed and a steel guitar. It's got a real kind of visceral <laughs> ness. I don't know. Is that a word? No, it's not a word, is it? Um, feel. Visceral feel. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like it's electric. What I'm going to do now, obviously, it's got one pickup. Um, it's obviously got a tone and a volume control. Oh, there you are. I've dialed the tone off. With that, you know, dimed and a little bit, put a bit of drive on that as well, you've got a lovely. going to do is I'm going to play something and, and just muck around with some pedals and the tone control and um, stuff and we'll just see what sort of sounds can come out of a single pickup guitar because they're more versatile than a lot of people give them credit for and hopefully I can show you so I'm going to just play something now and then we'll come back later and we'll talk a bit more about it. Okay, see you in a bit.
have it. That, that, my friends, was the Loic Lepap Steel G Kid. What I was trying to say earlier was it's, it's got a visceral quality about it, hasn't it? It's kind of got this, it feels alive, you know? It feels alive in your hands, it's got a zing to it. And I noticed that when I was on stage, you know, I played it, as I said, with my band. Did a couple of gigs with this, actually, and it was really, whoa, you know, come on. Uh, obviously, yeah, I mean, it can sound real nice and, and, and crystal clean and takes drive tremendously well. Um, yeah, so I don't know, you know, I don't know where that leaves the tone would debate. I haven't had time today to compare it with a wooden one, but I know that a lot of you are going to say, oh, do that. So we will. We will at some stage. So, um, you know, make sure you keep following the channel. That'll happen, you know, won't be next week, but it will happen in the, in the future. OK, um, we'll, we'll, we'll compare this with my, well, I'll show you this. <laughs> My 1962 Les Paul Jr. Yeah, 62. Les Paul, you see. It's Les Paul on the headstock. So that's before they called him the SG, obviously. But this one will have been made out of uh, Honduran mahogany. I think that's what they called it, isn't it? Honduras, Honduran mahogany. No doubt in 62. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see. To see, yeah. Well, that's a proper tone wood, isn't it? And that's steel. Okay. That'll be in the future. But for now, what more can we say about this? Um, yeah, it, it, you know, it does, well, it, it, it does what a traditional guitar does. Tuning wise, I wanted to add as well, hugely stable, hugely stable. And that was one of the things I wasn't, you know, I thought well, maybe because it's still, it won't be. No, bang on, you know. There's no problems there at all. So it doesn't, and even gigging, you know, when you're going into those like high stress situations, should we say high temperature, temperature changes, you know, going loading in a gig out in the cold, or whatever, you know what I'm talking about. No, no problems with it at all. It, it worked just like you'd you'd want it to. Um, so uh, yeah, neck. I did say got a proper chunky neck on this, um, which is great fun and. Um, it's like a badge of honour, isn't it? And uh, you go, oh yeah, baseball back neck, that's really cool. It is, but not necessarily so much when you're trying to be flash like I was earlier and <laughs> keep tripping over yourself. Because if you're trying to play <laughs> what I call fast, you probably want a little bit of a slimmer neck to pull that off, if, you know, convincingly, shall we say. Or, or maybe I should just practice more. But anyway, sounds great, looks great proper work of art. We're always saying that guitars are works of art. Well, of course, this, this takes it to that extreme, doesn't it? It, it, is a, it is a work of art. It's a one-off. It's a unique guitar. Um, do you, yeah, and I, you know, I, this is something that I asked for. You know, I wanted a, you know, I said I want a, an early SG Junior with a chunky neck, Grover tuners, wrap over, P90, Vintage white, and I'd seen one of his guitars with you know the peace symbol on, you know, the band of bomb or whatever they called it. So, yeah, um, uh, that that's yeah, make love, not war. But I thought, oh, it's a, it's a French guitar, isn't it? So, we'll have it in French, fait la mort pas la guerre. Um, fortunately, Loic knew how to translate it. Well, I hope that's what he says, that's what he told me it says. <laughs> That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Oh, I'm going to have to check that now. I have checked it. It's all right. Just joking. I've thoroughly enjoyed pulling this off the back wall and, and having a play. Um, the problem with making films every week with, you know, reviewing guitars and stuff is I don't get to play some of my little collection as, as often as I'd like to. So it's nice to be able to to do this with you, you know, to, to include you in it so that we all get to to see, you know, see what I've got going on here. I've got a few more things to share with you in the, in the coming weeks. So, uh, you know what, I'll say it. I never say this. Make sure you're subscribed, okay? So you don't miss anything, you know? But you know that I post films every Friday anyway. So um, you don't really need to be subscribed if you remember that. The most important thing 
honestly, is you keep watching. Come back every week and watch, okay? I love it if you subscribe, but it's more important that you keep watching, okay? Because if people stop watching, we're doomed, okay? We'll have to stop. We'll have to go and get a proper job or something, okay? Well, I hope that doesn't happen, honestly. So I'm relying on your support, honestly. That's it, okay? That's it for this week. Um, yeah, if you're thinking about... It, honestly, okay, um, if you're thinking about getting something special, the custom shop guitars are great. They're, they are very good. I mean, I'll show you some of my custom shop SGs. I've got a couple really nice custom shop SGs. But they're 10 a penny, okay? This, totally unique, okay? So if you fancy something, if you've got, you know, you've got three or four grand, you know, in the bank and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to get a... You know, I'm thinking about this because I keep going, oh, I want a Firebird 1, non-reverse Firebird 1, 65. You know what, they cost about seven or eight grand now. I could get Loic to knock me one up. A lot less than that. Half of that, probably. Less than half of that, even, maybe. I don't know. don't know what his rates are. He's probably gone up, but he'll probably go up after this. <laughs> I hope so, because he deserves it. Crikey, he must put loads of effort into these things. But anyway, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, well, maybe... Maybe that's the way to go. Something proper unique. Hmm. I'm going to go on his website in a minute and have a look at his non-reverse Firebirds. Uh, and I suggest you do too. Um, okay. What's, what more can I say? Um, thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for indulging me <laughs> yet again. Same time, same place. Next week, come back, see what we're up to then. I know what we're up to then. But I'm not going to tell you. Come back and find out. All right. See you next week. Cheers for now. Try.